And now, Whitney Media, 1460 WVOX presents Westchester Means Business with Marsha Gordon. Marsha Gordon is the president and CEO of the Business Council of Westchester. Now, here's Marsha Gordon. Good afternoon, everyone. This is John Rabbits, the executive vice president and chief operating officer for the Business Council of Westchester. Pinch hitting today for Marsha Gordon. Uh, before I introduce our guest, let me tell you a little bit about the Business Council, if this is the first time you're listening to our show. Uh, we're the county's largest and most influential business membership organization, and the BCW works to enhance wealth, profitability, and economic opportunity for all in Westchester County by helping our members market, learn, advocate, and grow. And our membership reflects the diverse makeup of Westchester's business community. Uh, to learn more about the Business Council, I hope you'll go to our website, which is www.thebcw.org. That's www.thebcw.org. Or give us a call at 914-948-2110. One of the exciting things that Marsha and I uh, love about uh, being at the Business Council of Westchester is that we continue to get more members uh, from different industries, but also members who really are drilling down on some special areas that help businesses grow. And the topic that we're going to talk about today is branding. And our guest is Julie Cotino, who is the CEO of Brand Twist. And let me tell you a little bit about Julie. She's the best-selling author of Twist, How Fresh Perspectives Build Breakthrough Brands. And she is the founder and CEO of Brand Twist and the creator of Brand School Online, an accountable branding class for entrepreneurs, small businesses, and non-for-profits. She's a former vice president of brand for Richard Branson's Virgin Group and served in executive positions at Intrabrand and Gray Global. She has taught integrated marketing communications at Columbia and Cornell Universities, and she's a frequent commentator on brand strategy and innovation in top business media such as Forbes.com. Entrepreneur Magazine, CNN, and American Express open for small business. She lives in Dobbs Ferry with her husband and two wonderful children. And Julie, we're just so excited that you've joined the Business Council of Westchester, talking about something that is so important for so many businesses to really not only understand, uh, but can, to really use as a tool uh, to help their businesses grow. So let's, let's talk about branding. Uh, in, in a few seconds, if you could just give us a little branding 101, because it is different from what people's perceptions might be. Yeah, thanks, John, first of all, for having me. But yeah, everybody confuses branding and marketing. That's the number one question I get. And I think branding is really your fundamental story, who you are, what's unique about you, who you serve. Marketing is how you get the message out there. So for a, br a branding, it's almost when some people say, well, I'm rehearsing my my elevator speech on so that when I go in to meet with a prospective client, I'm telling them who I am, what I do, and why I should be working with you. Exactly. And I think most most people has a, have a 20-floor elevator speech when they really need a two-floor one. And for a lot of small business owners in particular, that, you know, introduce yourself causes sheer terror because they don't know what to say. And often what they talk about is what they offer, what they do, and they really need to go beyond that. They need to talk about how they make people feel and what their twist is. So let's take a step back for a second because obviously throughout your career, and we talked about, saw in your body, uh, branding has been something that you've not only been studying, but also now are teaching and helping small businesses and other and larger businesses develop. T how did you get into the whole world of branding? Well, it actually started when I was eight. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, I really wanted a pet, and my brother was allergic, and my parents said no. And being eight, I didn't take no for an answer. So I went out in my garden and I took a rock and I put it in a Cool Whip container and poked holes in it. And I invented the pet rock. There you go. Now, of course, uh, two years later, a guy named Gary Dahl invented and marketed mm -hmm. the pet rock and stole my idea and made millions of dollars. But I've been creative problem solving since uh, eight years old. I got to ask the question, do you still have the pet rock? <laughs> you know, I bet my parents do. Okay. It's probably somewhere in the basement. <laughs> Um, so t talk to us a little bit about, I mean, because you've had, uh, you've worked for a huge international company um, who we, one would think, okay, well, the name Virgin, you know, everyone knows what that is and who he is, Richard Bramson, but tell us a little bit what you learned about branding, working from such a large company and how you've taken some of those life lessons and now are working with some of your clients who are maybe some small business owners. Yeah, the interesting thing about Virgin is it's worth $24 billion and it's over 40 years old, but it acts like a startup. And I think that's part of the secret. It's not corporate. It's very much lean. Uh, Richard's 
number one saying is screw it let's do it you know which means if we have a good idea we think there's an audience for it let's get it out in the marketplace if we fail that's okay if we learn so it, it is a very large company from spaceships to mobile phones mm -hmm. but it always felt like you were working with a startup and actually that's what made me want to start my own business so but working for somebody who i guess you can say richard ramson is larger than life um, obviously, he needed folks working within his corporation who could stay focused and, and not just assume that everyone knew what Virgin was and who he was to be able to sell your products. Yeah, the Virgin brand is amazing. I mean, Richard is so important to it, but it's bigger than him. And it's really clear what the brand stands for. You know, it's about going into industries that are tired, like airlines, mm -hmm. and shaking them up. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows that. Everybody walks the walk. And Richard himself uh, is somebody in his personal life that does things like try to break records or go kite surfing or, you know, gets involved in climate change. And I think that's really important, that your brand behaviors – match your message. Our guest this afternoon is Julie Cotino, who is the CEO of Brand Twist and the author of Twist, How Fresh Perspectives Build Breakthrough Brands. Uh, let's talk first about uh, Brand Twist. Tell us about uh, how you left uh, Virgin to, to, to start your own company, and then we'll spend some time talking about the book as well. Yeah, I think I took that uh, screw it let's do it <laughs> to heart. And I came home and said to my husband, I'm going to leave my wonderful corporate job and start my own business. And he said, I don't think that's what that means. But, <laughs> um, but I've never looked back. It's been five years. And I really saw a gap in the marketplace. You know, I saw lots of big branding firms, some of which I've worked for in the past, that does do a great job of helping big companies. And then the individual entrepreneur could get information online, but there was nobody really in between, nobody really helping the small business owner with not just advice, but really actionable advice. And that's why I started Brand School Online. And so tell us some about the activities on Brand School Online, too. Yeah, it's a, it's a great program. It's, it, because it's online, we have people from all over the world. And since you're a busy entrepreneur, you don't have to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's a 10-week program. And we teach people to take their brand and make it stronger, You know, make their story crisper, get a better idea of their ideal target, have a brand promise that really stands out, and most importantly, to find their twist. And uh, I guess one of the things that probably is a challenge for you, and tell me if I'm off base on this, obviously if, you have, if you're working with an entrepreneur or a small business who's come up with a concept, it's been their passion, uh, they've have hopefully raised dollars so that they can actually operate what they do, um, but then they have to sit down with somebody who really says, you know what, you have, you've done all the right things except your brand is off or you don't have a brand that's really going to distinguish you. That must be hard for some people to hear. And how do you, as the person on the other side of that conversation, have to chip through that so that people can understand that you're not telling them to burn everything down. You're just saying we need to make sure that you're getting the best out of what your business is and doing the right things to get people to know what they do. Yeah, I mean, the way I approach it is I really believe that your brand is a business asset. So it's not my creative judgment. It's me wanting to allow you to attract more customers, get them to pay more for your goods and services, make your social media and your marketing work harder. And once we put it in those terms, you know, get better word of mouth, it's going to grow your business. Then no small business person, you know, even if they've got some ego involved, mm -hmm. is usually going to argue with that. You know, then they're open to the message. But what are some of the challenges that you've seen working with businesses of all sizes? I, the biggest challenge is brand, what I call brand blinders, which is we spend so much time in a given category. You know, it could be financial services, healthcare, wellness, whatever it is, that we are we're looking to be legitimate. You know, we're looking to make sure that we're taken seriously. So we tend to sound like everybody else. We use the same images as everybody else. We're living night and day in our category. And the result of that is that we look and sound <clears throat> like everybody else. So if you took your website and hid the logo and looked at the websites of your three competitors, chances are you're not going to be able to tell one from the other. So it's really trying to get somebody who probably thinks that they're doing something uh, original but really now turning it around so that pe other people can see that this is a service that they might never have thought existed. Yeah, and you know, I, I really don't get a lot of resistance because if people are open to brand school or reading the book, they, they have a feeling, they have a sixth sense that their brand could be working harder. And that's where the twist comes mm -hmm. in. And the twist was actually another true story where I was uh, working for Interbrand and I was flying out of Newark and I saw this airplane in the uh, airport with golden arches on the tail fin. 
And I thought, you know, I was having a very mundane experience. I hate traveling for business. I couldn't even remember what airline I was mm-hmm. about to get on because they all look and sound the same. And then all of a sudden I saw these golden arches on the tail fin and I thought, well, that's different. You know, that's going to be friendlier. It's going to have brighter colors. You know, maybe I could buy a regular seat and supersize it. Mm-hmm. Right? And it actually turned out to be a mirage. It was just the reflection of the food court on the window, oh my gosh. and there was an airplane parked right behind it, and so it looked like a McDonald's mm-hmm. airplane, but it wasn't. Mm-hmm. And that was in 2001, and I've been twisting ever since. And so, and, and I assume that a brand that works today has to always be evolving because of circumstances and life changes, and, and so that it's not just saying, okay, I've got my brand, um, um, I can move on to other things. It's always paying attention to that as well. Exactly. Branding is never done. Mm-hmm. It's never finished because mm-hmm. the markets are changing. Technology is changing. I mean, the f- social media has made everybody have bigger marketing budgets now. And the fact that you can set up a website in a matter of minutes, you know, with a lot of these templates means that the barriers to entering any market have gone way down. So competition is really at an all-time high. You know, this is John Rabbits. I'm the Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer for the Business Council of Westchester. And our guest this afternoon is a BCW member, uh, Julie Cotino, who is the President and CEO of Brand Twist and the author of Twist, How, to, How Fresh Perspectives Build Breakthrough Brands. If people wanted to learn more about your company, could you give them their email address so that they can go to your website? Sure. You can uh, go to brandtwist.com. Uh, if you want to find out more about the school, it's brandschoolonline.com. And uh, the book is at thetwistbook.com. So all, all roads, you know, if you Google Brand Twist, you, all, you'll, all you'll, you'll get to, you. to us. And I was uh, sh- sharing with Julie that uh, Sarah James, who's our vice president of membership, was at one of the larger health clubs in Westchester County uh, working out. And she turned and looked across the room to somebody who was on a, one of the machines, and she was reading Twist. Yeah, so, that's exciting. Uh, your, your book is, 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 is getting great, great coverage. And uh, obviously for small businesses, uh, who really feel the challenge of trying to stay ahead of the curve, the whole issue of branding is important. And, and let's spend a minute on, because you mentioned social media. I mean, social media probably has transformed so many aspects of any type of business because of the fact that it's 24 seven and it's also changing. So when you talk about twist in branding, how has that adapted through social media? Yeah, well, I think a big part of it is you have to be very visual. So, you know, you're you're sitting here now. I'm wearing my twist color, which is purple. Sarah probably saw the book across the room because the cover's got a lot of, mm-hmm. you know, uh, purple and pink on it. And I think you need to think in terms of word of eye on social media, not just word of mouth. So you need to have images that represent your brand that you can put on Facebook or Pinterest or Instagram that people are going to share, mm-hmm. uh, especially if you're targeting younger consumers. You know, people don't tend to write long reviews anymore. You know, they're going to take a snapshot of their favorite uh, yogurt or their favorite vacation spot and share it that way. But 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 help me with this because it what you just used the word snapshot, and when I see, you know, when I'm on online or when I see my kids online, I mean, they are constantly going like this and so it's not like they're sticking with a page for more than a few seconds so how do you work with your uh, clients in terms of getting a brand that if somebody clicks it once they say oh wait a second let me let me go back or something like you said with the image that you saw on the airplane it stuck with you yeah I mean if you look at a category when I'm talking about the brand blinders if you're a bank everybody's red and blue you know the logos look all the same the images are exactly the same you know if it's retirement it's that gray-haired couple on the beach you know looking off into the sunset so I would twist away from what everybody else is doing and if you think of a bank like ING you know they've got that bright orange color they have the bright orange ball mm-hmm. they're gonna you know, you're gonna see that ad for a second in your Facebook feed and you're gonna remember it mm-hmm. and so I, I, is it the repetition of, of being able to get people to, if they don't see it the first time, uh, the second, the third time, that they finally might say, wait a second, that, that's something I really want to learn more about. Part of it is repetition. I mean, you, you, you know, I think as entrepreneurs, as small business people, we get bored of our own messages way before they've sunk in, <laughs> you know, so you have to keep repeating it. Part of it is also just having a message that really connects 
And, you know, in brand school, we talk about this as top of the pyramid branding, you know, not the bottom of the pyramid, which is what you sell. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like if you're looking at sneakers, you know, it would be talking about soles and sizes and materials. Nike goes right to the top of the pyramid and they talk about achievement, you know, just do it, who you can be. And so what we do in brand school is we look at brands, big brands, small brands that we admire that are outside of our category, and we twist those lessons. Well, I mean, you mentioned Nike, and I can now see some of the commercials on Dick's Sporting Goods. I mean, some of these, they do tell a story. And if you turned on the TV and, and saw the, one of these commercials before you saw who it was for, you would might not assume it's for a sporting goods store or for it's a, a sneaker company because they're telling a life story of usually it's of an athlete who's had to raise above, rise above it and let, raise their level of performance under great odds. Yeah, and, and that, that draws you in. Mm -hmm. And I think as small business owners, the number one tool that we have is our story and making it authentic and making it personal. Because if somebody's already decided to do business with a smaller business, they're already saying to you, I'm open to that personal connection. I'm not just about you know, the best prices or the widest selection, I want to know that I'm buying from a real human being. So tell them who you are. You know, expose your personal twist. Our guest this afternoon is uh, Julie Cotino, who is the CEO of Brand Twist and the creator of Brand School Online and the author of Twist, How Fresh Perspectives Build Breakthrough Brands. This is John Rabbits, the Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer for the Business Council of Westchester. I hope you'll learn more about the Business Council by going onto our website, which is www.thebcw.org. Learn more about the programs that we have at the Business Council for members and learn more about our members like Julie uh, and the services that she provides. Yeah, and I just want to say if your members are interested in finding out how healthy their brand is, go on brandschoolonline.com and apply for a brand health check. This is a free evaluation. It's us looking at your, we'll look at your brand, we'll talk to you for 45 minutes, and we'll tell you how you could twist, how you can make the brand stronger. So if someone went on the Brand School Online, I mean, as you said, it's online, you don't have to travel, you can do it, but is there a, is it a lesson by lesson plan we didn't talk about the duration of yeah it's 10 weeks okay. and it's eight lessons over 10 weeks mm -hmm. and you have to apply for the program mm -hmm. so you have to fill out an application we'll have a conversation about whether or not you're a good fit we'll give you advice you can use right away during that health check and if we think you're a good candidate we'll talk to you more about the program so a health check to me it also sounds like you actually can do some sort of branding audit too yeah exactly mm -hmm. exactly we'll look at your website we'll look at your linkedin page and we'll give you you know, as an outsider, which I think is a really valuable perspective because we don't have those brand blinders, mm -hmm. we'll tell you right away how we think you're doing. So I, I have to ask, because you, again, you've, you've run the gamut of working in large corporations and probably working with smaller businesses. Has there ever been a brand where you were like, you know what, that's just not going to work and it surprised you? Or, and then on the flip side, has there been a brand that you really had a, you had a fight for to say, believe me, I really feel it in my gut. If we go this way, people are going to notice. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a huge fan of brands in general. So even if they fail, I think you could learn something. I mean, a great Virgin example uh, it was a little bit before my time, but it was a textbook case for all of us was Virgin Cola. So on paper, that looked like a great idea because it was going up against Coke and Pepsi. Mm -hmm. It was shaking things up. But it turned out not to be a great business idea because it didn't have what makes Virgin successful, which is really an experience. It was really just kind of popping up the can of soda, taking a drink, maybe burping, maybe not. But, you know, that was sort of over. Mm -hmm. And so we learned at Virgin that it couldn't just be products. It had to be larger experiences. And, and again, it's always evolving. It's and, always evolving, right. yeah. Um, let's go back to the book for a second because uh, obviously – it, it's an undertaking to, to write a book. And so tell us why you decided after being in the business for so long that it was important to write a book and what your hopes are that the book will be able to do. Yeah, I really, I, you know, I, I wanted to reach more people and the book seemed like a great vehicle to do that because, you know, brand school, we only take 12 students at a time. Not everybody's ready for a 10-week commitment. Uh, so it was just a way to to reach people all over the world, actually, mm -hmm. with our core messages. And it's a great inter introduction to branding. I think it, it's great for graduates that are looking for their own personal twist to people who have been in business for years and years and maybe have fallen out of love with their brand. Mm -hmm. And what were some of the challenges that you found writing the book? Uh, editing is the hardest thing mm -hmm. I've ever done. I mean, I, 
I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so getting the first draft out was pretty easy because mm-hmm. I'm just I live and breathe it. I have all the content. I have the passion for it. Um, but then actually the process of sort of finalizing and getting it ready for production, I found really really painful. Yeah, but yeah. It's, it's a great accomplishment to be able to sit there and, and say that you did it, and now hopefully sharing it with, with, uh, with others. Our guest this afternoon is uh, Julie Cotino, who is the CEO of Brand Twist and the creator of the Brand School Online, and the author of Twist, How Fresh Perspectives Build Breakthrough Brands. Um, you're in Westchester now, which we think is great, and uh, Westchester is home, but you're also now beginning to work with businesses, hopefully, in Westchester County. Uh, Tell us how that's going. It's amazing, actually. I have to say the first part of my career was so New York-focused in the city. I actually lived in France for three years, which is why I have this hard-to-pronounce last name. (laughs) Hopefully I'm not Yeah, No, you're doing great, but I I worked for Gray Paris, and I married a Frenchman and Mm -hmm. brought him back. Um, But then when I started my own business about five years ago, all of a sudden I saw there was actually a really vibrant business community in Westchester, and... Uh, Every day I'm meeting people with great ideas, small businesses, established businesses. I love it. If I never have to get on Metro North again, I'll be happy. I mean, I think there's just so much right under our nose. Well, and and, and hopefully as you continue to work with us at the Business Council of Westchester, again, one, one of the exciting things that we always talk about in the office is that we're able to involve so many different industries that in some cases people wouldn't think actually called Westchester home. Uh, biotech, hospitality, a lot of the professional service firms and, and our smaller businesses and non-for-profits that, that play such a pivotal role. So. Yeah, I've worked for everything so far from non-for-profits, uh, real estate, to dog neutering, and they were all based in Westchester, mm-hmm. so it's been really no, fun. It, it, is, it is a vibrant place, and we, we like to say, in a, in a way, it's the branding that we've worked with uh, the county's Office of Economic Development about f- four and a half years ago. Uh, they came up with the slogan, the intellectual capital of the world. And the hope was that people would understand, that, and businesses would understand, that Westchester County uh, is close to New York City. Uh, it's only 25, 45 minutes away. Uh, but we have so many things in Westchester County and people who live in Westchester County and work in Westchester County uh, that do make it us that, that intellectual capital, which is so exciting. I love that brand promise. Well, so you have my approval. Okay, good. And we, did, and, and we didn't go to brand school online, which, yeah. is, which is good. But one of the challenges I think that we still always have to face is when, when people want to, we want to have be businesses to locate here or re, or expand here, uh, it's constantly giving them the pitch on why Westchester. I love that you said that because one of the powers of brand that I talk about in the book is that your brand walks into the room before you and it stays after you've left. And a lot of the small business owners I meet say, I've got a lot of word of mouth. You know, when people meet me, they love us and they hire us, but you have to get more people in the funnel. Yep. You know, you have to get more people that are aware that Westchester is the intellectual capital mm-hmm. and more people that you can then give your in-person pitch to or, you know, whatever it is. And then when they leave, usually the decision doesn't happen right away, right? right? So they need to go back to the website and be reinforced, mm-hmm. you know, that they're making a good decision. Maybe they want to share it with their boss or a spouse or somebody and say, I'm thinking about moving here or I'm thinking about hiring these people. What do you think? And your brand sticks around. And, and, and I guess we, that brought just something that popped in my mind, and we, and I guess it's something that we've touched on, but it's that consistency. Yes. I mean, that must be one of the challenges that you have when you're working with a small business to say, look, if we're going to start this, it, you can't have the brand mean one thing in one area and, and another in a and look and it look at and feel and different in another area. Yeah, do fewer things better. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's one of the things that I learned at Virgin. They're really good. Not the biggest advertising budgets, but the red was pervasive. Every touch point when you fly Virgin, for example, from pre-boarding to being on the plane to after you land, there's a moment of magic. Mm-hmm. And in brand school, we work with entrepreneurs to find it doesn't have to be a hundred moments of magic. You know, it can be three, it could be five but just reinforcing your brand message at every touch point. And the magic evolves. I mean, it can be, it can, you can have that aha magic moment and then all of a sudden not have that moment or that feeling for a few weeks and then it comes, you know, it comes back. So it's constantly working to achieve that magic moment as well. Yeah, and often it's overlooked moments. You know, it could be an invoice that you have to send a client anyway, but why not put a clever message on it or your email signature or the way that you dress Mm -hmm. or a gift that you send a client for a referral. You know, don't send them 
a gift card or a bottle of wine, in my opinion. You know, take a few more minutes to think about something that's going to reflect your brand mm -hmm. and send them that. And it's reflecting the brand, but it's also keeping that thought and that gesture in someone's mind uh, so that they un re not only remember it, but to have a positive memory of it as well. Exactly, and that they're going to share it. Mm -hmm. So you're top of mind when a friend of theirs says, hey, I'm thinking about moving my business you know, where should I go? Mm -hmm. And you want to be top of mind. So there's a lot, again, when we talked at the very beginning, you said there's a bit difference between branding and marketing. I mean, obviously they have to, they have to work together and they have to be linked, but it is really two separate things. I mean, if you don't have that brand message fine tuned, you could spend boatloads of money on marketing plans and go nowhere. Amen. <laughs> that's, you know, that's the message we send in the mm -hmm. book is, don't spend another dollar on Me Too marketing, mm -hmm. you know, until you've defined your brand. If you've hired one web designer and they didn't do a good job, maybe it was them. If you're on your second or third or you're fiddling around with your copy on your website, it's not their problem, it's yours. Right. You haven't given them a good brief, you haven't done the hard work. But I think that, and again, what, what, what I hope our listeners uh, really see in the opportunity of the Brand School Online is that you do have, as you said, that fresh set of eyes who can really come in and give that type of an audit, that type of an objective perspective on what's working and what's not, and then continue the, the, the person through the journey of the of the online courses. Yeah, and, and it's a group. So you learn from me and the other faculty, but you also learn from each other. And that's and part of the beauty of it is you're making connections, valuable business connections like you do for the business mm -hmm. council that can last a lifetime. So if you had to give in just a, we only have a, it's gone too fast, but just a few seconds left. If you had to give one, again, ongoing message that you would give, whether you were sitting next to Richard, across the table from Richard Bramson or from a CEO of a non-for-profit or a small business, what would that be? Find your twist. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's out there saying the same thing, promising the same thing. Spend more time thinking about what's really different about me personally and professionally and give yourself a way to stand out. Well, again, it's it's so important, and it's such an important basic tool that businesses probably have really can fail if they don't have that. So we encourage anyone who's listening, but also to all of our members as as they get to learn more about Julie and the work she does. And Julie, if you want to give your website one more time and phone number, sure, it's uh, brandschoolonline.com. And this is John Ravitz with the Business Council of Westchester, the www.thebcw.org. Please learn more about what we do to help businesses grow in Westchester County. And always feel free to give us a call at 914-948-2110. And we'll see you again next week. Cool.